On the Healthy Human Revolution podcast, Dr. Lori Marbus interviews nutrition and lifestyle medicine experts and extraordinary guests whose informative and inspiring stories will empower you with the knowledge to transform your life and health. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marbus. And okay, guys, I am so beyond thrilled and honored to invite my dearest friend, <laughs> Nikki Cruz, to the podcast. Welcome, Nikki. Hi, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, we were laughing and crying before the interview because we were just going down memory lane. Oh, gosh, what a story. So Nikki and I met four years ago, just a little over four years ago. She was one of my patients in Florida um, at Dr. Furman's Health Oasis um, before it shut down. And Nikki, you have an incredible story of weight loss of almost 300 pounds yeah. and but before we get there and it's a plant-based diet guys but before we get there I really want you to understand how far Nikki has come in her life and how it evolved to get to that over 500 pound mark I think was it 506 pounds Nikki or was it more yeah, it was, five nine five yes ten? yeah somewhere in there I do remember when we weighed you that day <clears throat> and the tears started streaming I said Nikki you'll never see that number again and you never did and yeah. um Oh, we'll, we'll get to all those amazing yeah. stories and memories, but can you tell us a little bit about your childhood and what kind of led to, what led to that? Tell us a little bit. Um, well, um, I, yeah, it just, it all started really young. Um, food was always a comfort in my family. Um, my, my I, I, I truly feel it started with a lot of loss. So I have a lot of loss in my, in my story, um, but, uh, you know, that made me. So uh, it started with my grandmother. I had a really close connection with my grandmother, uh, my mom's mom. And she passed away when I was nine. Mm. And, you know, from from five to nine-ish, you know, I was healthy-ish weight. I was always a little chubbier, but I was active. I was a dancer and took eight years of, you know, tap ballet and jazz. And, um, but, but my parents were also um, addicts. And, you know, I, I, I say it with loving, they were in recovery and, and really took charge of their lives. But I, I joke and I say, I really never had a chance of mm -hmm. not, of having a normal, you know, existence, <laughs> you know? So, right. um, so for me, it was the food. And when my grandmother died, um, definitely noticed it in my mom. I remember vivid memories of my mom kind of ballooning and, and whatnot, and, and just kind of going to the food for comfort. And, you know, being nine, um, you know, that's what I did as well. And uh, from then on, it just kind of escalated, snowballed. Mm. Um, and it was always that kind of reinforced that we clean our plates, you know, um, but we also eat for comfort. Oh, are you sad? Did you have a good day? Those rewards that you, you know, un subconsciously sometimes you know just kind of uh say to mm -hmm. come um that kind of stuck that stuck with me and um I learned to numb things that were happening um in my life uh, with food so a couple of years later um this is all yeah so my grandmother died when I was nine uh, my dad was sick my mom was also very sick um and my dad uh passed away when I was 12. So the food full swing at the age of 12, I was probably, oh my goodness, almost close to 200 pounds. I mean, I, I, I was very, very obese. So um, I, was, I was shopping at Lane Bryant, you know, at 10, um, didn't really fit into, and this was back in the 80s, maybe 90s, I don't know, <laughs> 90s. Um, where, you know, those plus size or whatever, those options for clothes wasn't, wasn't there. Anyways, I digress. So um, just always in the food, you know, long story short, always in the food to kind of deal with sick parents, um, having to be out of school, um, having to deal with my mom who was kind of, you know, ailing at the time and, um, you know, just had to grow up very quickly um, and, and do those things um, as an adult would do, but then also have this like best friend 
in, you know, shoving and, and shoveling things away and putting things in my mouth. So, and they weren't, you know, my mom was blind as well. Um, and she did cook, but for a while, you know, it was solely me or what I could get fast foods or whatever, you know, it, it was whatever. It wasn't um, a conscious thought about, oh, I'm going to have consequences to these actions as I put food in my mouth. Very unhealthy, um, that growing up. So anyway, so then when I was 16, my mother passed away and um, I, I dealt with both of my parents' deaths very differently, uh, being 12 and, you know, prepubescent, uh, all that fun stuff <laughs> coming with being a 12 or 13 year old. Um, I was very angry and, 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 sh and just shoveled it all inside. Mm -hmm. um, with my mom, a little bit different, still numbing with the food and, you know, having those really, um, those behaviors, those food behaviors um, that didn't quit, binging, uh, right. you know, trying to purge, like just in full swing of food addiction um, at 16. Uh, and, and, and throughout my childhood, parents, my parents have no noticed this. Um, and did a lot to try to help me, um, you know, took me to different counselors, trying different diets, this and this, but um, for whatever reason, it just didn't stick. And I wasn't, I now know I wasn't ready um, for whatever reason, um, sure. but, yeah. but anyway, so yeah. <laughs> so what happened when you were 16? So now you have no parents, no grandmother, where did you go? Yes. So I had a legal guardian in uh, Maryland and I went to go stay with uh, him and his family. Um, it was a tumultuous relationship to say the least. Um, I ended up, I want to say within the year, um, emancipating myself. I got my own apartment uh, junior year of high school and uh, went to high school and worked at a pizza place in town and Old Navy for a little bit and, um, you know, made it work. I, for the first time in my like high school, you know, career, I was going to school on a regular basis mm -hmm. um, because when I, you know, when mom was alive, she was in and out of hospitals and stuff. So I just, I'd never left her side pretty much. Um, or I was, you know, at the house taking care of things. So um, yeah, 16, junior in high school, junior, senior in high school, and um, still on my own, right? So right. I could do what I want. I can eat when I want. I can sleep when I want. I just had to know, I just knew that I had to go to school and work, <laughs> you know? And, right. and then I got into college, which was crazy um, in and of itself. Um, and uh, <laughs> college out of state, uh, which was crazy, but um, I went to Michigan after college and um, by the help of Donna and Jack, you know, my, my people, my you know, aunt and uncle, my family. And, um, and it didn't fare so well though. You know, I, I, I was in this mindset of um, my priorities were off. Let's just say my priorities were off and what really took precedence over everything was that relationship I had to food. It always just comes back to food and and um, hurting myself with it. It went it went a little dark, you know, in, in college. Um, I was on my own still, um, but in a in a crazy new state, you know. I I'd have moved around, but just because you know. My, my parents had died and I kind of had to, um, right. but this was just me, you know, I didn't know anybody. I knew one person um, at the college and went from there. And I, you know, I, I tried real hard for two good years and, um, you know, it just, it just, the priorities were off and it just, it took me um, away from that. But um, I, what else did I do? Oh my goodness. Yeah, so I went to college. <laughs> And walk through, let's walk through your 20s. So then through your 20s, because how old were you when you came to the Oasis? That was in January of 17. I'm in my 30s. I, early, early 30s. Early 30s. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm 30, okay. 30, yeah. yeah, yeah. 30 something. Um. <laughs> Whatever. I'm in my, I can say the 5-0 now. So my friend, 
thirties are like baby. You're baby. Yeah, you I'm pregnant. About? I'll take it. I'm thirty. <laughs> there you go. Own yeah. it, girl. So yeah, just, yeah. When I when I got to the Oasis, I was like, yeah, thirty four ish. Yeah. Okay. So tell us a little bit about the twenties. I mean, because you didn't, you weren't in your early twenties, five hundred pounds, but you you got to the five hundred pound. What what was going I on there? Five hundred pounds. I was always pushing um, three three fifty. You know, I moved to Florida after um, Michigan, after college, college, the five years I spent in, in Michigan. Um, mm -hmm. And I was, and I ballooned. I, I really just, uh, it, it was a change. I, uh, I was very much, I talk about um, a dis my disease as, as far as food addiction. Um, I, it's like, um, alcohol like a, I'm like an alcoholic but with food mm -hmm. um and I and I for once like I own it proudly because for if I didn't know that I wouldn't be the person I am today and I truly it's just been a complete yeah anyway so I, I digress so I go back but yeah so it, it just kind of um it ballooned when in, in Michigan it ballooned when I came back here just because I had a geographical change mm -hmm. um I was in this limbo where I was going to go back to school, um, but priorities, other things um, took precedence over that. And um, I served, I was a server and that was not a good place for me mm -hmm. um, to be constantly around food. Um, no, like, yeah, it was really hard. So then, so, and I, and I served for a good seven years before um, I got, um, you know, a, a job teaching. So I was in it. And, and I think that really was just, it was there. Food was very accessible. I had four different um, fast food chains on my way home. Yeah. Um, and when I got out at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, I was eating all day. I would eat and stop and go home and then eat. Um, so it definitely, my weight got, um, it's no, I snowballed. I became just like this. You yeah. Know, other, the, you're not that tall. What are you? Five, seven, five, eight. Five, seven. Yeah. Five, seven. Yeah. So yeah. the over the 500 mark, mark when I met you at 34. So tell us a little bit. <clears throat> so Jack and Donna, so everyone knows is they're, mm -hmm. they're dear friends for both of us, but Jack and Donna were part of the health oasis and they were kind of the impetus for you to come. So how did that conversation go? So someone's coming to you and saying, here's an opportunity for you to radically change your diet. You have to come stay with us. It was six weeks. Was it six weeks or four weeks? That I six. Yeah, six, six weeks. weeks. And, um, you know, how did you react to that? And how, especially coming from, from Jack and Don, what was, what was that conversation and how did that make you feel? Make me feel? Oh gosh, it was a whirlwind of emotion. Um, Jack and Donna have been a solid foundation in my life since I was eight years old. So they've seen, they've seen what, um, you know, my progress in my disease. They've seen, they had relationships with my parents. Um, they've, they've been there. And I, I know it, it wasn't easy for them to come to me. Um, you know, my relationship with Donna, especially, um, just really is a mother figure to me, you know, and I was at this point in my life where I threw it up. I, I threw in the towel. I, I couldn't, couldn't do it anymore, you know, and I just, when they said, hey, we did this, you know, because we did this and we want you to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And we know, um, how important that this experience would will be. I feel like they knew, they obviously knew, right? But mm -hmm. um, when they were like, we're opening, this is where you need to be. There was no discussion, you know, mm -hmm. there was no, it was just like, we need you to do this. I want you to do this. And I wanted to do it. So I was just sick and tired of being sick and tired. And, yeah. and I, I knew that if I didn't change, um, I would, I wouldn't be here and I, and it sounds so cheesy, but, um, you know, just losing my parents and stuff. I just knew I, I had more to give. I had more to, um, share and do. So, um, 
yeah, it was, it was a hard decision. I mean, I couldn't even, I remember the first day too, um, I got offended, right? Because they were like, can you put on your shoes? <laughs> How dare you? What do you, what? I couldn't, I couldn't even put on my shoes, you know, like I was wearing shoes, but slipping into them, sneakers mm -hmm. slip into them. And that, like that, yeah, just that yeah. moment. Um, and I had a couple of them, you know, yeah. like seat belts and these things I couldn't do. I couldn't live my life. And so at that point, um, I hit that spot where it was just like, I'm gonna die, everything. And I had major support, major support from all my friends and family mm -hmm. to go and do this, you know, yeah. got off of work, like <laughs> all that stuff. And, um, and yeah, so I, I'm just so eternally grateful for that and for, for, you know, Donna and Jack for, and Dr. Furman and you, and just having that place. Cause I, I solely feel like that place was meant for me. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, we had close to 50 people go through during that six months and it was, it was pretty tremendous, the stories that come out of there. Um, but uh, so the first day you came and we met and we did all of, you know, the weigh in and all that type of stuff. So tell me what it was it like as you started eating this way because we served the food. Look, this is how the setup guys was. I said that I saw them. I saw everyone every day except for on weekends, but they lived in apartments that we had for people and we fed them that we delivered the food or you made your breakfast. If we, but we supplied the breakfast, you know, oatmeal or whatever you'd ate lunch with us, you ate dinners, everything was, I wouldn't say sort of a lockdown, but not, it was a voluntary lockdown sort of a thing. It was definitely a bubble. Yeah, it was a bubble. It was a very um, secure space. Yeah, it was a safe space. Let's put it that way, where you wouldn't be struggling. And there's a lot, there were a lot of people like that with you there. Mary's one of them. Um, she's a sweetheart. Yeah, Mary has her own story to tell, which we'll get to. Um, but tell me, like, what were those first few days like? Like, as you're listening to other people talk and you're going through the therapy sessions and you're eating this food, what's going on emotionally, physically? What's going on there? Um, a lot of highs, a lot of lows. <laughs> I'm not gonna sugar, I'm not a sugar coder because I don't, yeah. um, but I, you know, it, it was scary. I, I noticed I definitely had to detox, right? So I, like we said, we're in this bubble. I felt very safe. I wanted to be there. Um, I was very much wide eyed and anxious, <laughs> but just like, kind of like one of those, you know, anxious way, I'm just going to take everything in. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, you know, I know I'm okay. I sent you know, I know that person I'm, I'm in a safe space, but, um, having the food and learning how to like what lycopene is and how that <laughs> does well with your body and how it like learning all these things. I, I think I would phew, mind blown, right? That was oh, my, oh my goodness. That's right. You what? always did that. You go, <laughs> Oh, these concepts of like health and nutrition were so foreign to me. Um, and so, so I digress. So I go back and it's just starting to eat this way. I'm noticing my body feels different. There was a point where I thought my body was going to shut down. I was having pains and I was angry and I was um, very snippy and <laughs> um, not a very nice person, I don't think. Um, but I think that was a lot of the sugar withdrawal and, and, you know, just going through these things and just eating wonderfully for the first time, almost in my whole entire life, um, changes you like it, you feel it, um, you know, going through, um, therapy sessions on different ways of, um, dealing with traumas and, um, dealing with life you know, because for the long time, life was just food. And to kind of switch my relationship, it took a lot of coaxing, you know, mm -hmm. it took a lot, you know, and I think, and it took a lot on my body. Um, I remember exercising in the pool mm -hmm. for the first time and then calling you and being like, my body, I think I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> like, you know, my arms are hurting my body. Like what is happening? And you're just like, just do a little less brush strokes, you know, brush strokes <laughs> like you'll be okay. You know, so you're moving. That's what you're doing. Yeah, yeah it was moving. Yeah. And, and so that was a lot of um, getting in tune with 
uh, at the Oasis, getting in tune with my body, with my mind, with my everything. And, mm -hmm. um, and that was, it was intense at times. It really was, but amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it, it just, it gave me the foundation to kind of live, um, live this life. And can we, can we talk about the muffin tattoo? Oh God. <laughs> Oh my God. So this is one of my favorite Nikki's oh, stories. So Dr. Furman, I would teach um, and eat with you guys and do your metrics, make sure your blood pressures and do your meds and all that were okay. And I would teach the day and then Dr. Furman would come down once a month or so. And when Dr. Furman came in, he'd come and teach and eat with you guys. And, but <laughs> you, <Okay. laughs> I remember, I remember. Oh, the anxiety that was yeah. pulsing. Oh my God. You were freaking out because you were going to meet Dr. And you were so worried that he was going to see your muffin tattoo. Can I you have, Dr. Marbus, it's actually a cupcake tattoo. <laughs> but but, I, but sem whatever, semantics. Anyway, so yes, I have a um, muffin cupcake tattoo on my <laughs> arm. And I was going to meet Dr. Furman, right? Who... Yeah. Oh, who is like the epitome of health. And he's just like, oh, you eat a carrot and you know, this is what your skin looks like. And he, so he was going around having a discussion, teaching us all this, you know, mind blowing, you know, phenomenal things. And he goes around and he's engaging, you know, there's like maybe five, six people in the room. Like, I think at this point it was very intimate, you know, it was very quiet. <laughs> I have my long sleeves on. And he just comes up and he, whew, he's talking about, was it lycopene or something? It was carotenoids Keratin and right. how your skin will be uh, more colorful, the more carotenoids you eat. And that's when he came to you. He did. And he was just like, put out his arm, pretty much the same arm that I have this wonderful monstrosity on. And um, I just panicked, but... Mary, I I think Mary knew I was panicking, right? And she was just like, oh yeah, like my arm, like, oh yeah, like use my arm instead. <laughs> and I just was like, oh my goodness, God. could you imagine I just shove a cupcake in Dr. Furman's face like that? <laughs> I just, I couldn't, I couldn't. I was just like, yes, else, eat, your, eat your salads. I, I love, you know, I love all the things you're telling me. <laughs> Look at this huge cupcake tattoo. Oh, the, it was great. I that. wanted to change it to like a carrot, you know, like this. Like you probably can, still can. You know. Oh, I'm sure there's something we could do with that. But uh, it's just, uh, I just remember that was one of the funniest stories. Um, and then you're just your visualization of things to help uh, you. Can you tell a few stories of like how you, you know, because we would, we provided DVDs and other things you could watch at the apartment and stuff. And there was an ethical side of that thing that you really engaged with. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the whole, yeah, all those documentaries and stuff. I legit, do we go bolt to the head? Really? Is Holy that what Mar that's where okay. I'm going is bolt okay. to the head because it was so funny. <laughs> all right. So I have always loved animals and I've, you know, respected that and just being, you know, in one of these sessions, my mind was blown. And I remember seeing this very vivid um, documentary, a heart wrenching um, about slaughterhouses and yeah. the, the meat and the stuff that we ingest. And philosophically, it, it really stuck with me because um, anything, I don't, why would I want to ingest something that died, lived, and died in suffering and um, just turmoil and just in horrible living situations. Why exactly. would I want to take that energy or whatever you want to call it and put that in my body? Like right. it just doesn't make sense now. So <laughs> what I had to, not what I had to do, but I have a sick, twisted sense of humor sometimes. And I just had to be like, I don't want this. I don't want the sick and suffering. And I also saw a cow get a bolt. <laughs> To the yeah. head. Yeah. And so, and that was just traumatic, traumatic, you know? And so I would be like, Hmm, yeah, someone's grilling bolt to the head. No, nope. yep. eat this salad bolt to the head. <laughs> and you know, and it there was, was just, 
so was, many times that I heard Vicky, Vicky go bolt to the head. I'm like, why are you saying bolt to the head? Why? And, and then, then she explained. And then you're like, all right. <laughs> yeah, it was a weird experience for sure. I definitely feel like the other, you know, people around me are like, what is so, wrong? It was, what but, was amazing were the strategies that you came up with to help you make the decisions you wanted to. And what was really cool is you were developing those yourself that really meant emotional to you and it was super successful. So as you went from day one to the 42nd day, you're with us six weeks later, Mm -hmm. tell us that transformation. Like where was Nikki when she started and what was Nikki as she left still beginning her journey, but had an incredible journey at the Uh, same time. Kickstart like the I had amazing like what do you call it like a running oh you got a you got a big kickstart for sure yeah Yeah. running um and I think had that foundation not been so solid that that wouldn't have worked so I think um in all of this my weirdities my my oddities I guess um is what I I had to do so um yeah so I I started and it was it was scary. And, um, I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't do my, uh, couldn't buckle my seatbelt mm. you get picked up to go to, to sessions and stuff every day. And I think the first day I had a breakdown crying, you know, on the way to the Oasis and I couldn't, couldn't click it in. And from then on, there were all these little, like two weeks, two weeks I got, you know, I get weighed in. I lost 15 pounds. What? Mm. <laughs> that's insanity, you know, and, and just, you know, my mood would ebb and flow, but the accomplishments that were happening, I think that really, those little tiny clicking my, this being able to walk up a flight of stairs. Um, I remember we would do yoga, uh, every, um, every weekend almost. And I couldn't even connect my arm or my hands. In, in, in a pose so it was you were supposed to do this like grab your elbows couldn't you know it was it was here and so the the moment that I got here was a mo- you know was was insane so mm. my time there was um whew, sorry that's okay it, it was um instrumental right in in yeah. in um my my progress well I cried with you when you buckled your seatbelt for the first time I was like I I never really connected to that side of living a life of morbid obesity right um having never dealt with that but when I saw that in your reaction it really made it very real like to me you know what I mean so and just talking to you about all of your trauma that you had had and just your experience and um it was really um life changing for myself too. And, and really building more compassion and understanding. It was really instrumental. So I, I would say you made me a better doctor, Nikki. Thank you. Oh, so. I think you already are the best. You know? <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, ray of sunshine and just the best. You're, you're a sweetheart. So yeah. now, but now this is kind of, this is kind of fun to talk about too. So you go home and <laughs> what was, I got to tell, tell them what was in your kitchen. The, <laughs> what did you have at home or lack thereof? <laughs> really nothing. You had a, I think a pot and a spoon, right? Oh, I had a spoon, a spoon. Um, <laughs> a spoon and a pot with no lid. Right. Um, yeah, I might've had a fork, but it was legit like bare. Like I went home to nothing and, um, and that's fine. You know, I think that was first the the first and foremost like thing that I was supposed to I was already one up because <laughs> I was told to clean out my house and only, you know, take out everything I had and I was like, well, I'll move that spoon. <laughs> okay. Um, but no, but I I remember the drive home and I took a picture. Um, I remember it was like February 19th. I think yeah, I 2000 yeah 17 and I drove home yeah I drove home and I had pink hair and um yeah a big smile on my face and 50 pounds lighter 50 pounds lighter 50 pounds lighter like I remember I think you had yeah I think you had like a diagram or like that lob of fat yeah it was only five pounds and um I think you and Donna like kind of brought in like, hey, do we need to to find something that's 50 pounds? Like to really realize like 
you know, six weeks and that, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I left the, the Oasis and I never, you know, I just kept everything. I, I, all of the notes that I've taken and um, things you've said, (laughs) the, the printouts, the places I could go, like, and I made this my, my life. And uh, it, it definitely eased coming out of that bubble, having the, you know, Dr. Furman's the plant-based diet. Um, and that led to some uh, amazing opportunities um, mm. in my life in, in this, you know, adapting to, to eating this way and, and feeling good. So, and so you would go back and you were, um, in, as a teacher with all these little kids and you started teaching them. So tell us a little bit about that. Uh, we would, so I lead through example, right? I'm a woman now of action. And, um, you know, a part of me w- did this because I was, I really like teaching and I really like reaching and uh, caregiving for these, you know, these babes and stuff. And so I wasn't a good teacher when I was 500 pounds, you know, and going back lighter with a new, the fog, right? Mm-hmm. We call it like that mental fog. Um, whew, being lifted gave me such a perspective to be a better teacher and a better, better educator. Um, I went back and, and I had my salads every day and we talked about the things I was eating. They would eat carrots. And then we, we just made a whole project pretty much on eating greens and eating well and what that means. Um, and, and it, it took off, you know, I, it was it was a month couple months project with three and four year olds which is kind of unheard of um but they were into it and i i can't stop talking about it you know what i mean like i owe plant-based this nutrition you my village um you know so much because why wouldn't i want to share that you know so sharing it it made me a better teacher and and it just led to a lot of uh, a lot of good too so, so the first year the first year passed and you lost how much weight? Oh goodness. Um, over 150, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think you were close to, it was close to 200, wasn't it? Two. Yeah. It was, it was a lot. Um, yeah. The last, last year I was, uh, three years. Yeah. I did a, I was down to 275 pounds. Wow. Two, yeah. Okay. So drastic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A so, lot. People. <laughs> that's uh, it's amazing and so we're you're hinting in that year mark and tell us a little bit let's walk down the gallbladder what happened with your gallbladder so uh at first I didn't know <laughs> I was just in a lot of pain um yeah losing all this weight and eating healthy I hadn't I, I don't touch soda like I mean it was water I was hydrated like everything and then I thought like oh, okay I'm good and then I had this pain <laughs> Mm -hmm. that would not go away and it was um just horrendous and uh, at that moment I was a little afraid of doctors and you know but not I don't know why it was just this hesitance to kind of like oh it'll go away you know Mm -hmm. it's fine um and it didn't and it was Thanksgiving 2018 maybe 18 um I think actually it was I think it was earlier, wasn't it? Because like kind of within the year of me coming out of, um, yeah, and stuff. So yeah, it was, I think uh, anywhere, it was somewhere in there that you had got call stones. And I remember Thanksgiving because I got a lot of, um, and I, at this point I was still, I'm very, um, I was big. Um, and I go in and, uh, and skate like just horrible pain. Uh, I drove myself down the street. I had to stop a couple of times, but um, long story short, yeah, I had uh, gallstones Mm -hmm. and pancreatitis and needed to have um, gall, it removed gall surgery, gallbladder surgery, whatever. (laughs) Um, Yeah, actually I have it here. It was uh, 2017. So it was the first year you had the gallbladder. First year. The first year. How much weight, like it was also over a hundred and something pounds. Yeah, yeah. I definitely feel it's my body's way of taking, you know, getting the, dealing with the consequences um, of of eating this way and kind of like, I mean, you know, you know, the, the medical side of it all, but uh, on my side, I just knew it was horrible. And um, 
that was my first personal hospital experience. It was the first time I've ever been in a hospital and I was there for 10 days. Um, it was, uh, it was rough, you know, trying to do that. Oh, so when I got to there, I go back, um, it was Thanksgiving and I got a lot of like, oh, well, we see a lot of this um, during the holidays because people overeat and oh. they, you know, and I was like, actually in my like, just pain, I was like, actually, sir, let me tell you something. I've been eating a plant-based diet. So, and I didn't eat turkey and I didn't eat this. So you can kind of like shove that theory out of your, you know, out of the window. Um, and then it was also thank, you know, Thanksgiving. And so I had to wait for the surgery and it was just, it was just a rough time. Yeah, it was really rough. And then, um, you know, I can, I can go on and, and within those three months, you know, the consequences, we'll just call them. Yeah my body's way of saying like, I love what you're doing now, but you know, this kind of, that, that hurt us. So, um, my body went crazy. I had some, um, cysts and, uh, fibroids in my uterus. So, uh, that was a scheduled surgery. Uh, the gallbladder kind of came out of nowhere as my first and, um, my first experience with being in the hospital and having to have surgery. And so gallbladder, 10 days in the hospital, recovery for maybe a week, go in for another second surgery um, yeah. on my uterus, and then um, developed a whole lot of fun. Um, <laughs> uh, some more major consequences, we'll just say, in the, yeah. um, the nether regions. <laughs> Rectal regions. <laughs> there we go. You're the doctor. So, yeah. So, just a quick recap: when you lose a dramatic amount of weight, gallstones can develop, and it doesn't matter if it's a plant-based diet or fasting or whatever. Rapid weight loss does put you at higher risk for the gallstones. So that you know that's a pretty common occurrence. Even like if you have bite, you know, gastric bypass, whatever. But we also go. <laughs> I did want to share when you had the other surgeries in the. The surgery and you were having def problems defecating having yeah. bowel movements and we were texting yes when we were texting because um i don't know dr marbus i can't give you more accolades like it's just <laughs> she is the she's the go-getter she's the person she's the doctor she's the human being you want in your corner and i oh. am eternally grateful because um yeah, just hospitals and this just, you know, it just wasn't a good place for me. And I, I looked to Dr. Marbus for a lot <laughs> at that time, my sanity was going. And um, yeah, do you, would you like to? Yeah, yeah. we, we, you know, you go over and above for the people you care about. I'm just going to say. I'll tell you, um, it was, it's funny because I got lots of texts. Can I go to this restaurant? It's like, you know, we'd talk about the menu right. and there were many of those type of conversations, but then we, we centered around poop for a bit. <laughs> yeah. And I love talking about poop. I actually have a cup with different types of poop on it. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's important. But we had this one and I just really feel like you need a cheerleader sometimes. And so I, I was this, having a really hard time going mentally, physically, all of it. And I, quickly text Dr. Mom is like, oh, what is happening? Yeah. And this was her response. And so, you know, on your iPhones and they have those, those little an emojis and there's a little poop icon mm -hmm. and emoji. Okay. Nobody else would think this funny, but we were really laughing. So I'm going to share, cause I keep all your text messages and this is, <laughs> this is the text. So this is the little guy he's, he's hanging out. He's doing his poopy thing, right? Oh, you can see that me. he's about to talk and I'm going to set you can do it, Nikki. Let's give a poop. Woohoo! Let's go, let's go, let's go, poop. Woohoo! So, anyway. You can do it, <laughs> Nikki. Let's and I, so I was just like, I don't know what to do other than send her a poop emoji and encourage her to it. poop. I, I, <laughs> and what happened though? And then what was and, the. And then, and, and I, then you pooped. <laughs> and I get all these poopies and emojis from you and fire <laughs> anyway um that's, sometimes that's, you just need a little encouragement but tell <laughs> no that's cheerleader that's oh cheerleader. oh so. my gosh it was so fun but um 
I mean, these are the type of things and, you know, I, I, and I really, the reason I kind of wanted to share that kind of that struggle point with you in your story, one, because you're, you're just so delightful to share it, <laughs> but yeah. also, but two is to show, cause I get a lot of patients. They're like, they get really frustrated and they're like, why isn't, why aren't I like that story? Like someone could read your story. And it's like, she lost almost 300 pounds already on a plant-based diet. And they never, if you didn't write about or talk about your struggles, like, well, why can't I lose whatever or reverse my diabetes or do this or that? But I tell people like, you're missing the journey. journey. You're not, you, you know, you're not, yeah, you're not right. you don't talk about your dark days. Right. Right. It's not all rainbows and, you know, sunshine. Um, it's definitely led to a lot of those moments, but I think, um, like I said, it ebbs and flows with this, like, greatness and then it's also like it's experience and it's my strengths hopes and struggles you know and and I think I don't know I just all I have to do is kind of like present in front of it and deal so but I but I have amazing people to help me you know get over those hurdles so well I, I I tell you well Nikki it's one thing to have your your tribe and your people to help, but it's really your internal drive and your fortitude that speaks volumes of your character and your integrity and your willingness to be very vulnerable with people. Because if you're not willing to be open and vulnerable for those who can help you, you you're not going to advance, right? You're not going to you're not going to be able to to climb some mountains by yourself, you know. So that's where the, it's so important to have your, your tribe, but also be willing to engage with them and say, Hey, I need some help right now. And that's, that's really, really cool for you. And how you, how you did that, because honestly, you're the most humble human I know. And it's just, it's, it's uh, refreshing to see someone like that. So, I mean, oh. you were just never afraid to own it and ask for help. Yeah. Uh, it, but for a while it wasn't like that, you know, like mm-hmm. it really wasn't. And, um, until it clicked until, um, I was ready to be like, you know what, I do need help. I can't do this alone. And, um, and, and I was willing, I think that was it. I was able and willing to do whatever it takes to live and mm-hmm. live a healthy lifestyle. And, um, I think I owed it to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I owed it to my parents. I owed it to to the people around me that, that love me. And, um, yeah, so I just kind of have to go with it. And I, I don't know. So now you're, you're, I mean, it's incredible. It's it's such a beautiful journey and story of healing and coming out of tragedy and loss in, you know, doing the best you could at the, at the moments and then having an opportunity and you took it, even though you were anxious and scared. And then, thriving in these last four years to the beautiful Nikki we saw now you were beautiful then but now to see you it's like you've blossomed right it's like this flower was ready to burst and it just finally was like here I am and tell us about your life now what is that like I feel like every day is just like I am becoming my I'm my authentic self you know my my weirds my everything I just um I'm more open about it and I uh, things that used to scare me. I, I moved across country. I don't know. I'm in your, you know, beautiful state. Um, and for a long time, uh, you know, that wasn't, it, it wasn't even a, in my rear, it wasn't even in my vision, you know, my perspective at all. I was in my apartment for 13 years, hardly moved, didn't want to check the mail, you know, didn't want to do anything. And then um, two years ago, I was just like, no, I, there's opportunity here. There's growth out here. There's the mountains and (laughs) who I truly want to be. I don't know if you remember my goal, but it was to run marathon and Mm -hmm. to run hike uh, Zion national park. And I, I set that goal and, and, and I didn't move just to, to go be closer, but um, that was a major, you know, a goal for me was to, Mm -hmm. to make my, personality and my my authentic self match my geography I guess Mm -hmm. you know um being so shut in for a long time I don't I'd never experienced it um Mm -hmm. and now I get to drive like I was telling you earlier I get to drive to Target and see these beautiful snow-capped mountains Mm -hmm. and 
I am just, I get to go out there. I get to go and be in nature and just, and that for me makes me happy, right? That mm -hmm. uh, I run, mm -hmm. run, I walk, <laughs> I try every three times a week. Um, I go to this beautiful park because it's all beautiful here. And, um, you know, I run and when no one's looking and when no one's around me, I run until I can't breathe. And then I, I start walking, you know, but it, even working out like that stuff didn't happen before. So yeah. just the, the life that I'm living now, um, although can be up and down, I still get anxieties and stuff like that, but it's just so, so much better, you know, mm. just so much better. Cause I can get up and I can walk. I couldn't, couldn't walk. I do yoga. I, you know, I, I my body I like blows my mind every day. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just the little things that I can do that I didn't do before flying, you know, that was the thing that I kind of conquered and in, in, it's in the past, but, um, you know, just the little things I got into mm -hmm. an extra large, you know, and it's not about the weight. It's really not. It's, it's, right. it's about my mental space and where I am, but the, the losing of uh, releasing of the mm -hmm. weight, because I don't want to find that. Remember, I don't want to find it. it. Losing implies that I'm going to find it one day. They can have it. No more. Nope. Um, but I, you know, I just, it's just so much better. I don't know where mm -hmm. I was going, but I, it's just so much better. And I um, have opportunity and I'm taking, you know, strides even in lockdown, uh, in this crazy pandemic, um, still finding people and, you know, meeting and going out and trying to experience life um, on my, yeah, just being me. So. Yeah, I, and I love your Instagram because she, she's always posting uh, hiking and going places and looking and enjoying the new freedoms, the physical restraints have been released, right? So that's mm -hmm. the beauty of it. Um, plus your decrease risk for all the other chronic diseases. Right. And um, I don't have to go to the doctor very frequently. I don't get sick. Mm -hmm. I work with a lot of uh, toddlers and mm -hmm. runny noses. And for four years, I haven't had a sinus infection. And that was, I was going to the doctor uh, every month, I, probably every two weeks with a sinus infection or bronchitis or, wow. you know, something. And um, four years, I mean, I really, yeah, haven't been, been sick. So. so tell us, this will be a question that we get. What do you eat in a day? What is, what is a Nikki's menu look like now? A normal menu. So um, I try, I do my food prep um, with traveling and moving here, that kind of like a uh, moving kind of skewed me a little bit um just off my routine um i usually have i'm pretty strict with things um morning uh i get i have two things pretty much overnight oats with my berries flaxseed <laughs> cinnamon almond milk um it gets a little monotonous i'm not gonna like you know sugar never mind sugarcoat it but um <laughs> it's the thing i have to do and if i don't do that sometimes i'll do like ezekiel toast um, with almond butter um, and some fruit, lots of fruit. Um, my lunches will be, if I'm on the go sometimes with uh, toddlers, I have to kind of like eat on the go. I don't normally do, um, but it'll be like some kind of veggie edamame. Um, I love those packages. I'm very easy and I'm trying to ball and on a budget. Um, so packets of um, veggies, the steam fresh, love those, little nutritional yeast on them, Ooh, delicious. Um, if not, it's a big old salad. Um, I switch it up, a, like, any greens, fruit, nuts, my G bombs, like I just, I still do it. Um, yeah, and then dinner will usually be something that I've prepared like on a Sunday, um, tofu scrambles, that's the way I get a lot of my greens and my veggies in. Um, it's easy, it's quick and delicious. Um, ooh, I've tried to do these like portabella uh, uh, mushroom caps with mm. like um, quinoa and all my veggies. So there's a lot, there's a lot that you can do um, eating this way and, and, and blows people's minds too. I'm like, oh, well, I'll share like my tofu scramble with my coworkers and stuff. And they'll be like, you made this? And I was like, yeah, do you like it? Is it good? And they're like, yeah, what do you use? And when I tell them I don't use oil or salt 
or anything that they're just like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> yeah, your food can taste good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, without, with, you know, without all these added things. So um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I don't really, I haven't really switched it up. Sometimes, um, as you know, you get the text, <laughs> hey, can I eat here? Uh, what about this? You know, and, and I think in the beginning, I was very, very strict and, and, and right. it was like, you know, I needed that reassurance and stuff. Mm -hmm. But as this goes and it progresses, um, I'm yeah. fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I know what I have to eat. I know what I can and cannot eat. Um, I know how it does affect me if I would eat that. And those, I'm not really there for it, you know? So, um, but on a daily basis, it's pretty much just all fruit and vegetables, no sugar, no white sugars, you know? Um, yeah. And then the freak outs of like texting Dr. Marb is like, uh oh, how about this? Can I eat a tortilla chip? Like, oh, what is, you know? That was and, more like the first two years, I'd say, the but. First two years, yeah. yeah. You know, like you'd find a new restaurant or you would go to the movies or I remember yeah. when you were traveling here, that was, there was a few questions, but, yeah. but now yeah. you're, you're, you're no. flying solo I'm girl. You're to New York. Yeah. I've traveled. Like I bring my food. It's definitely different. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, I talk to ser like servers and people that pre prepare my food. Mm -hmm. Um, and nowadays the pretty, like even Colorado, like they're very, um, good with modifications. And mm -hmm. so I couldn't, I lucked out with that. So, <laughs> so yeah, so you haven't gotten the, oh, can I eat this? Cause not I, in a while, not in a while. No, yeah, I've got this, right? <laughs> you totally got this. I mean, yeah. And you know, that's one of the things, um, that we really, I really wanted to share on the Oasis is how do I do this? How do you do this on the outside? Right. Once you're outside the, the safe bubble in, you know, we've looked up menus and we talk about what we would order and not to be afraid to ask the server. You know, we talked about a lot of those different things and you, you were like a sponge. It was amazing. So amazing. It was so fun to teach someone like you. Well, you, and even the, um, you taught us how to, or taught me how to shop. Yeah. We went shopping. Yes. Yeah, we went shopping and <laughs> another little moment there. First time shopping, couldn't walk around the, uh, the store, couldn't walk yeah. around needed the cart needed to pretty much lean on the cart I to remember that. um and then by the time you know six weeks came about i was like you know walking yeah not a cart like so those little moments but so yeah but even the grocery store like definitely i i took it all in and now you're hiking up mountains i know i climbed i climbed a rock the other day like I don't know. I, I, I went, um, I was invited by Dr. Furman to go out to, mm -hmm. yeah. And for to California. Their, to California, right. I'm San Diego. Yeah. Like, I touched my leg for the first time. You know what I mean? Like from the back, like I did a yoga pose. Um, I sit on my knees, like just getting up is like, boop, I can get up. Mm -hmm. So it's just all those little, you know, things that I think I took for granted that people, some people, take for granted. And um, I think those are the moments that really keep me going. Mm -hmm. um, because I just, yeah, it just, it was, it was dark. And so those little bits of light and um, just help yeah. me, you know, keep on going. So yeah, Amazing. hiking, walking yeah. for fun. What? I'll tell you, Nikki, I delight and just whatever I'm, you know, doing the Instagram and I see yours on it, it just makes me so Thank proud you. of you. Mm. Thank you. I've tried, you know, I, I don't know. It just, it just seems weird when people are like, share your story. I'm like, nobody, you know, nobody wants Oh, to you have it. no but, idea how much, how many people you're going to inspire. Yeah. Well, they, that, that inspires me to kind of keep on. It sounds so cheesy, but it really does. Like it really, it, you know, this journey has not been easy, but God, it's great. It really, mm -hmm. um, met great people along the way and um yeah and I remember when we were talking about your running goal and I said I'd run with you and that's still holding you tell yeah. me when you're ready to sign up for your first race I'll be right there by your side the whole time well I gotta I think I need a little bit more training no time no problem but whenever like, that happens so I'm looking around running for five seconds and then 
and be like, okay, this is good. My heart's going. This is good. But you, we can't even walk, run, race. It's all what it's whatever you're comfortable doing. I just want to be there with you when you cross that finish line because I feel like that will be like your, uh, like a shining moment for you. I just want to be there to share it. I guess maybe that's my selfishness. I want to share it with you. So oh, please, I, I, you've been yeah, you've been instrumental. So why not share that? Amazing. Awesome. And I'm closer to you now. So we're good. Yes. You're literally like down the road. <laughs> oh, oh. I can see why you're here. It's magic. Yeah. So it's I came sure. back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nikki. So we've talked a lot about a lot of things. So Tommy, I like to close out podcasts with using your wisdom and your, your wit because you're so funny. Oh, and oh, by the way, where can they find you on Instagrams? I really want people to follow you. Oh, on Instagram. So I, well, it's my personal one. So That's I mean, right. I'm pretty open. Um, I started an, a, a one for like weight loss and stuff, okay. but I can't keep up with it. It just doesn't seem, this one's more genuine because it's me, but it's, um, Hey, Nikki, you're so fine. Exactly. Yeah. So I love yeah. it. And hey, we'll put a link in the, in the description, but absolutely. what, absolutely. And, um, what would you, what advice would you give to someone who's one, in the middle of this journey and getting frustrated and struggling, or maybe someone who's considering starting this journey, um, what would you like to share or other things that maybe that's in your heart? Well, what's in my heart is it sounds so um, cliche, but like you got, you can do this. Like if I, if I can do this, anybody can, you know, anybody can, and you just get your weirds, get your weirds that whatever you need to do, do it because it's it's such a good payoff knowing that you're loving yourself and that you're treating your body the way it should be you know like this you know i think time is precious and just do it you got you can do it <laughs> you know i have like my all my friends were just like writing little notes and every note was just like you got this like so that just yeah and have a doctor have a person in your corner just have someone that you can share this with because, um, yeah, and ask for help. Yeah, that's the thing. Ask for help. Ask for help if you need it. Awesome. Sometimes, yeah, because you need it. And it's just, yeah, I don't know. I can go on and on about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the struggle. It's the climb that matters. But it's, it's seriously just like, it's so worth it. Just becoming who you truly are and just negating and getting rid of all of that um bleh. the baggage the weight oh, yeah, the, the baggage the weight um the fog mm. eat a carrot you know <laughs> eat some kale <laughs> and and watch <laughs> i remember <laughs> being like ah oh, all i have to do is eat a beet or eat carrots like okay i can oh so, the oh, we could talk know. about the beets we didn't talk about the beets and so, how you Let's just say, eat your beets. You know, <laughs> I had an aversion for a very, very long time. Um, this is the law. This is a short story about the beets, but um, ugh, beet, gross. Never in my whole entire life would I be like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna eat that. <laughs> no. <laughs> so first day at the oasis, what's on your salad or what's on your, you know, your plate is a huge pile of beautifully. <laughs> beautifully uh, spiraled beets. No way. I was just like foot down, hard pass. You are not getting this in my, nope. And then it was a lot of coaxing from Dr. Marbus about telling me all the good things, what beets do. It's good. And then I also had a partner in crime with the beets. Mary. So, right, my Mary. She was right there like, mm -mm, nope. I was like, you too? She no. like, went to administration about the beats you know what I mean like I'm dramatic but um yeah. it's like no I I'm I'll leave now pretty much I was like no uh, but I ate them I they nourished me I eat beets pretty regularly <laughs> they have these delicious at Whole Foods like organic beets eat them just like that what so I anyway, but so it, long story, eat your beets <laughs> Well, I think it's a great lesson, right? Because you had a mindset that you weren't going to like something. You're like, no, but then you like through, 
so husband. interesting co- some coaxing um you're like well let's just try a little bit and you try a little bit and you tried a little bit and at first it was you're like I still don't like I'm like I know but just keep trying and then I and just you did you <laughs> did <laughs> but you know what but that was the I long it's not the pun the hunger right that was mm. the hunger for um a new way of life right mm. that was it I was like all right <laughs> white knuckling these beats but <laughs> but now you change your taste with a change yeah, you like them a lot of food thingies i remember you ate um <clears throat> so the avocado pudding that's right i was so excited to make that for you and you're like this you is not <laughs> so excited you were just like this oh what a treat what a treat you're in store and we were just like i looked at mary i was like there's no way there's no way but okay <laughs> open mind and then we watched you because you ate our dinners i believe at lunch sometime yeah so you would be I just remember you sitting there mm, yeah oh it's so rich and chocolatey and delicious it was delicious got it that night <laughs> i was like this tastes like and this is very specific another oddity you know in florida or when it starts to rain and the soil turns and there's this beautiful earthy tone of soil. That's how it tasted. <laughs> it tasted, like, it tasted <laughs> like you sprinkled some cocoa powder on, on soil, soil, on dirt, on dirt, right? Put some <laughs> avocado in it. Ooh, and ate it. So basically what it was is avocado dates and cocoa powder, right? Okay. So and I was so excited because I was like, this, this is like chocolate pudding. And for me, it was like, totally. and then you guys came back, you, you relish telling me oh, how Dr. this was you like. Lied. You lied. For the first time you lied to me in my whole entire life, you lied. But now it really is delicious. I make black bean brownies with it. I make the, that pudding. I serve it to my friends, put raspberries on it. And I'm just like, Dr. Marbus, day one, mmm. The soil tastes delicious. Soil tastes delicious. <laughs> but yeah, other, oh yeah. my gosh. But your palate though, like it does, oh, yeah. it changes. That I, I went through a mental change, a physical change and my palate changed, like yeah. transformation. That's yeah. that's what I, yeah, so. I think that's it. You're, you're Nikki, the, the transformation, your, your, your evolution has just been, it's been, evol it's been fun and- <laughs> It's been quite, I love being part of it. It's just been, it's been so much fun. I mean, it's just, oh, because you know what, you, what it is, even in your, your darkest hours and your real struggles, you always had a smile and you were always looking for the silver lining. Like there's just not very many people like that in this world. And so that's why it's so delightful to be in your presence. It's just like, it's Nikki. Nikki will make me laugh on my worst day. That's the way it is. <laughs> I like, thank you. That's the best. Yeah, that's the best thing to hear. Um, yeah, appreciate that. Absolutely. I think you're right when I go on tangents, but you know, <laughs> thanks for letting me do that. Uh, Absolutely. And I, well, I think those are the stories and, you know, where people need to follow. It's like, you know, I get, those are the stops in your journey that I think are fun to kind of highlight. And, you know, it's, it's the gallbladder, it's the surgeries, it's the pain, it's the struggles, it's the uncertainty. And then how you walk through that and you kept going, even though you didn't know, you just, you had faith and you just kept walking. You're like, there will be a step there when I get there. It'll be there when I get there. It'll be firm ground. And before you know it, you're Nikki on the other side of almost losing close to 300 pounds. I mean, and climbing mountains. Nikki, you're climbing mountains. I know. Wow. It's mind, it's mind blowing. I, I, Every day I wake up and I'm just grateful, you know, that I, yeah, that I can do that and that this is, um, yeah, this is my life. And so, yeah, it's just been, it's been great. It's been really good. Yeah. So go well, climb a mountain. Yeah. Go climb a mountain. It's the weekend. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story and being the open book that you are, because I really think you're going to bless many lives by hopefully that they're listening to this. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you again for letting me share my story and um, yeah, reach out. I mean, I'm here. If anybody wants to chat. Awesome. Well, I think you're going to, you're going to about to get some more followers on Instagram and you'll see where this blossoms. Yay can't wait.
All right. Thanks everyone for listening and the to the mini giggles. <laughs> oh gosh. Funny. I hope people like laugh. Oh, I I think we're funny. My cheeks I, hurt. Yeah. Like, right. Like, tell me all the time, like you can't make this stuff up. And I'm like, I know this is my life. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, all right. We're okay. Thanks everyone. And thank you again, Nikki, for just being who you are. You're such a beautiful person. I love you. Thank you. Me too. All yeah. right. I'll talk to you. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed that video. Before you go though, please hit the subscribe button and the alert button so you will be notified whenever we upload any new videos. On Monday, we upload the Healthy Human Revolution podcast. Now, if you'd rather listen to the podcast, you can find it on all the major platforms such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and even Spotify. On Tuesdays, we upload the Doctors In. This is where I answer your questions. Thinking of that, could you please comment below any questions you might have about health or wellness or any topics that you would like me to cover? Now, if you're looking for more resources on how to start a plant-based diet, sustain a plant-based diet, exercise, recipes, anything regarding wellness, we've got you covered. Check out HealthyHumanRevolution.com. And again, thanks for watching.